Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job, I work at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, I do nothing but elder law, but this is not about elder law. This is about Frank and Mary and their goal, which is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. If you've seen my presentations at the Hudson Senior Center, you've seen these folks before. So the question is, what are the things you know that you need to know about as a as a Hudson senior to help you live happily ever after right where you are? So we have two great guests uh, with us today. My my uh, my co-host John Parent couldn't be with us today. We have two wonderful guests, um, Andy Horvitz and Tom Desmond. They are both um, um, founders of the Hudson Cultural Alliance, and I we asked these folks to come on today to talk about probably one of the most significant things that, that is going to be discussed and maybe the one of the most expensive. It's a big item on the on the at the next town meeting, which is going to be on uh, November the 16th. Um, and that is the the Warren article related to the Hudson Armory. And I will let Tom and Andy elaborate on what the article is about uh, and why they are very much um, supportive of this. So who wants to start? I'm happy to dive in. Thank you, Arthur, for the introduction and, and the opportunity to, to tell, tell you and your audience about the work we're doing here. Uh, the first thank important- you. And Thank you both for coming on. We really, I really, really, really appreciate it. Yeah, so the first important point I think we'd like to, to make clear to everyone is that there is no money involved in the November warrant article. Um, on the 16th, the town has an opportunity to continue the process moving forward for our nonprofit to fund the acquisition of the armory by the town. So in November, when we get together, uh, presumably at the high school, uh, I guess we'll see, um, we're gonna have an up-down vote as to whether the town should pursue the process. And there's no commitment of dollars whatsoever uh, from the town to that process. And so what does all of this mean? Well, uh, if I may, uh, I'd love to tell just a brief story about maybe how we got to this point. So, the state of Massachusetts, the Division of Capital Asset Management and Maintenance, DCAM, has been going through a many multi-decade process at this point of disposing of older state assets. The Hudson Armory now among them. And so it was a couple of years back where DCAM approached the town of Hudson and said, would you like to buy the armory before we take it to the public market? And at that time, a group of downtown businesses, the Business Improvement District, explored that opportunity and they explored a range of uh, angles you know, for use of this building. And they thought that a performing art center was potentially a good use of the facility. And they developed a plan around building out a 400 seat modern theater at a cost of up to $10 million. There's no path from zero to $10 million. So the bid pulled back and Mr. Desmond uh, and I, along with some others, stepped into the void to pursue the acquisition of the armory and to get hold of the building on behalf of the town. And so we as the Hudson Cultural Alliance have been engaged with the town and state for about a year now. About three, four weeks ago, we learned that our purchase price for the armory would be $230,000 for use as a, uh, an arts and culture facility. And so now we are actively fundraising to pay for um, our private organization to fund the acquisition of the armory by the town. I see. So that so the so so that's I think that's really informative. And I think once again, one of the reasons for this show is to give people kind of a sense before they're walking into a town meeting of kind of what kind of what's really going on. Because one of the things that's it's, it's difficult now with kind of the lack of a of a of a kind of a substantial local newspaper to really to have those kinds of conversations. So you're saying that the Warren article, so so technically does the Warren article commit the town to purchase the building uh, or does it simply basically put a put a, a hold on that um, until some 
some later date. Yeah, Tom, you want to take this one? Yeah. It what this does is it really just essentially it says that the town wants to continue the process. And if it passes, what will then happen is DCAM, uh, the, the state agency, will draft up legislation because the under the, the the bidding laws, the state laws, the the legislature actually has to give DCAM the authority to sell the property to the town. So all this really does is it says, yes, the town is still interested. Uh, DCAM will develop the, um, the the legislation, and then we've already met with our local legislators, uh, Kate Hogan and Jamie Eldridge. It will then be up to them to shepherd that legislation through the state legislature. Once that process starts, that's really when the clock starts ticking for us. Uh, we've been told that once that legislation is introduced, we have roughly six months in order to come up with the, the purchase price money, the $230,000. Um, so what this is really saying is it's the town is saying to the state, we want to continue the process. I see. I see. And, and, and where did the $230,000 figure come from? That uh, the, the Hudson Cultural Alliance, we paid for the, a, a, uh, a private company to come in and do an, an assessment on the property. Um, and that, as Andy, I think, alluded to, we just recently got that final report that, that outlined how they went through the process and how they came up with that number. But that was done as a result of a, of a professional company coming in and assessing the property. I see. And, and, do, you, and do you have some indication that the Commonwealth is, will agree to the sale of that property for that amount? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes. That, the the entire process was contingent on them doing the assessment and coming up with the price yes uh, that i see as far as we know that's a fixed fixed price i see and i and i would suppose that in terms of your fundraising efforts it, it would be really difficult to do much fundraising unless there unless you, you already had that kind of commitment from the town that said that if the if the money was raised that the building would be transferred so so kind of as a as a as a related question is would would, would uh, since you're telling me that this was part of a of a state process that basically gave the town the option to buy the building before it went out on the market so in this process is it anticipated that therefore the town would end up acquiring the building that the that that you folks would fund the acquisition but that the town would acquire the building that's exactly right. And so the, the process is the opportunity for the town is for the town or its designee uh, to operate the building. And so under our model, we fund the, the profit funds the acquisition by the town, and then we strike an operating agreement with the town. And, and, and so if I what so if I'm a town, if I'm a if I'm a senior, right? And so I'm I'm hearing this and I'm saying, well, this is great. I'm just kind of playing devil's advocate. So this is great because the because we're not paying for the purchase, but now we own this building and it's a big building that's been there for a while. And I would once again, I haven't. So I have never been in the in that armory, right? Um, um, I don't think. Um, and I'm an old guy, right? But I I I, I can't. It's I can't remember. It seems to me that there was a actually there was a Marlboro city council inauguration that ironically happened in that armory because the marlboro armory was having so anyway that was a long time ago. so so but if i'm that town taxpayer i'm saying to myself so what so what am i buying here if this if if, if who like who's going to pay the maintenance on the building and who's going to insure it and who's going to do all that other stuff and then kind of what's the plan so so can you kind of speak to those those issues what how do you imagine that building functioning in an ongoing on an ongoing way well i i'm presumably without town support right 
but with the with, with the nonprofit having the capacity to basically make sure that all the bills get paid. Can you just kind of speak to that? Sure. And the thrust of this initiative and our ask of the town meeting voters and previously of the board of selectmen is to simply off give our nonprofit the opportunity to continue to pursue this project because as long as there are no administrative roadblocks our organization can continue to fundraise then acquire the building and then we're approaching this eyes wide open we recognize that the building needs at least a million dollars worth of repairs to get it open to the public but step one for us is to get hold of the building strike an operating agreement with the town of hudson continue to fundraise yes our organization will be responsible for the maintenance and upkeep insurance of that building under that operating agreement um, and if we can't hold up our end the town can go ahead and, and move on from the building there's really no risk to the town and so we acquire the building we continue fundraising toward its rehabilitation with an end goal of creating a community arts center, an open space that can be home for artists, um, musical, uh, music and theater performance acts, winter farmers market. The opportunity for the town is to have us as a private organization raise and invest hundreds of thousands and potentially millions of dollars in the coming years uh, in this downtown community asset and to keep it under town control at you know our goals uh, at no cost to the taxpayer so if, once again if i'm a hudson so if i'm a senior and i've got nothing to do which most of us don't have anything to do these days right um and i wanted to drive around could is there are there any other models in 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 communities like here in Massachusetts? I, I ideally close by, but you know, just communities in Massachusetts where where this is the path that they took, and that there's this, some ongoing stuff that is you know, and and then and and how would how would I find those? Because I would think that would be my that'd be my goal. I'd be I'd be hearing this and saying, well, you know, this this all sounds great, but I'd like to see if it works someplace, you know, before we did anything. Well, the the model that we looked at was actually this is not nearby. It's the Somerville armory. The, mm -hmm. uh, the town of Somerville renovated uh, an arm. The, the design is not quite exactly the same, but the layout is similar and uh, they've now that that eventually was a private entity took that over. They have a, a performing arts center there. They have a, a coffee shop. They've also um, renovated a number of the office areas for uh, small businesses. So that's in terms of an armory, that's probably the best example locally. Um, in is it Natick or Framingham, Andy? Where Natick. Uh, Natick took a uh, an old fire station and did something similar. It's T T Cam or T Can T Cam the, the, the center, center for the center arts. For arts. Yes, so a t an unbelievable arts. facility, an unbelievable yeah. facility. Right, took them and, a long took them a while, but it's really grown over time, very mm -hmm. substantial. And so early on in this process, probably we're talking maybe eighteen months to almost two years ago when I was working on this project with the Business Improvement District, we went over on a couple of occasions and toured the uh, Somerville facility. And uh, that's kind of been the model we've been working with um, as we move forward here. Um, this has always been, in our minds, a long-term plan. Um, but we realized last year we applied for a number of grants from the state and the federal government but we found unfortunately because we didn't actually own the property that they were hesitant to to approve any of that uh, any of that funding we're we're pretty confident that if if and when we can own this property we will then be eligible for a number of both state and federal funding to, to help us forward with this project 
And so does that, and so from that, are you anticipating that, and, and I'm going back to something that Andy had kind of mentioned earlier, that I think I think he indicated that that the that there would be an option under this process for the building to be conveyed to the town or its designee. Are you anticipating in the that the final deal would be that the Commonwealth would convey the building directly to the Hudson Arts Alliance or to an entity created by the Hudson Arts Alliance as opposed to transferring it to the town? Our understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, Andy, is that it would have to go to the town initially, and then we would we would work out the deal with the town. So, for example, when DCAM requested that that the town pay for a an assessment of the building, the Hudson Cultural Alliance gave the money to the town, and then the town paid DCAM to have the assessment done. So. We're, we see some kind of an arrangement there, but I believe under the legislation, it has to be conveyed initially to the town of Hudson. And do you know once it has been conveyed to the town of Hudson, whether there are any constraints on the town's ability to then convey it to you? And once again, I'm thinking of it, I'm thinking of it from a, as an old senior taxpayer that's got, it was looking at this building going, oh my God, if there's a problem then, you know, there's a slip and fall, there's liability, what do we, what, are, what you know, and if, and if the Hudson Cultural Alliance fails, what are we stuck with, right? So so does does the town have the ability to just turn around and convey the property to you folks at this at that point so that you can kind of do these other things? Yeah, th there are some restrictions. And so the, the price, for example, the $230,000 price is predicated on the building being used as an arts and culture center uh, for, for other different and, and other than other than nonprofit uses of the building, uh, I believe the purchase price is on the order of a million dollars. So the 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 price of the building is informed by its end use, and so there are some restrictions uh, in that vein. I see. And so and so if it if it is the town, and that means the crucial piece of this is that you need to be you need to be having this agree, operating agreement with the town to kind of do this stuff. Do you have any any kind of budget sense of of how that would look over the? I would assume you've got you're gonna you've got some initial period where you're gonna have to be raising money to do whatever renovations you have to do. I would assume the magic ADA words always you know you know ring out when I see a large building like this. I would think you've got an elevator issue. You've got those kinds of issues. So you've got this period where where you're basically just spending. And then you've got, and then at that at that point, then you've got this operational period once you're steady. So, so can you give people a sense of how that how that might how that might play out, or are you figuring that you're going to have that information to folks, you know, you know, kind of in short order, like like before the a actual acquisition occurs? We uh, and, and so you're right. So there are, I mean, in our rehabilitation model there are inclusions for uh for accessibility um elevators uh, asbestos remediation we we know that there are issues with the building um hence the high cost of rehabilitation we think it's worth it uh, you're right there is going to be a period from acquisition through fundraising and rehabilitation um, where we will need to maintain the building ostensibly without operating revenue um, right. it's our understanding that the state's cost of holding the building in recent years has been on the order of 40 to fifty thousand dollars per year uh, but based on conversations with a range of local people uh, we believe we have tremendous community support for you know mothballing that building and and being able to hold on to the building and maintain its condition uh, for very low dollars. You know, we'll, we'll need to pay somebody to cut the grass, but there's not likely to be a whole lot that needs to be done on an ongoing basis on the interior if we can turn off the plumbing and shut the building down for even if it's a couple of years while we fundraise. Uh, we expect those maintenance costs during that time to be effectively de minimis. And at this point, do, do, you, do you have a, you, you had mentioned the figure of a million dollars in terms of the cost of actually doing what you wanted to be doing. So is does there does there exist kind of a scope of what that would look like in terms of 
the elevator and the yada 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 that that adds up to a figure and is that figure you know can you talk about what that figure is at this point obviously that's always a moving target because you know it depends on when you're doing it. it it is of course and we've had an architect involved from the beginning and we have estimates from uh construct we had architect and we had construction professional uh involved uh with this project from the beginning we have estimates from case on construction alluding to a phased approach it's a big building effectively two floors plus the balcony more than 30,000 square feet we think it's a based on those projections it's about a million dollars to get the first floor open and operating and a little bit closer to two million dollars to rehabilitate the entire building there are some efficiencies gained if we could do the whole building at once, but we think that we can be successful and get the building open to the community once we acquire the building and raise the million dollars to at least rehabilitate the first floor. And then we could take you know, further rehabilitation and our longer term goal of a community theater in phases. I see. And so, it, so assuming that you were doing it in phases, can you just kind of just, or do, do you have a, a, a plan? I should have asked if there was a, you know, just a physical plan that people could see. I, I, I should have asked if you wanted to do with kind of a screen share with a plan of something, of, of kind of how that would lay out so that people could get a sense of, for that kind of money, we're not doing these other things, but we have this performing, we have a performance space. Cause once again, I've never been in the building, so I don't know what, what the rehabilitation of the first floor looks like. Essentially, and I would yeah. oh. essentially uh, if you look at the, the building from the front, that's the, the, this all office and classroom space there. The entire back piece of the building, the first floor is for lack of a better word, a, a huge gymnasium. Um, it was used as recently as last year by the, uh, the uh, state fire services. They had set up, actually set up a, an obstacle course in there for training their firemen. Um, our feeling is that, and based on the discussions we had with the architect and with the with case on construction, that we could rehabilitate that that first floor, that gymnasium which would give you a ton of open space uh, to, to do flea markets, farmers markets, uh, the library could run their book sale there and so on. Um, and we, we actually have a 3D model that in the early stages of this, we were hauling around with us to various, um, various venues to show people. And we also have uh, the, the the architect that was working with us has drafted up some some mock-ups of, of you know what it would look like and of course it's what it would look like in the final stage you know not not maybe midway but we've got a pretty good idea of, of how it would all lay out um, you know the class the, the classroom spaces that are there now those could be used for classrooms they could be used for small business uh, the basement of the building is really, uh, there's, there's not a lot of permanent walls in there, so that could be designed or built almost to spec for you know, a particular, you know, if a dance company wanted to come in, if Symphony Pro Music I wanted to put in some practice rooms. So in our discussions over the past year, year and a half with uh, Rivers Edge Arts Alliance, Symphony Pro Music, uh, the Hudson Public Library, you know, we've, we've got a number of ideas or suggestions from them as to what what some of that layout would look like. The the gymnasium area where the theater eventually would be would be designed with movable seating so that, you know, during the time of year that you weren't using it for the theater, you could use it for a, a farmer's market or a book sale or, or a Comic-Con, whatever, you know, whatever, you know, it would give us a lot of it's going to be designed with a lot of flexibility and so so going to that so does that i'm thinking about that million dollars so two just two two kind of i want to say final questions because i i i just kind of trying to be attentive to my time too sure. <clears throat> like in terms of what the million dollars would buy you assuming you, you were raising a million so at the end of that day you would have those the front rooms 
you'd ha- and you'd have this big b- back space. Does that space is that space at that point a performance space, or does that st- or does the performance the the stage and that stuff in the still have to be built out? That's probably further down the road. What what that first million. I think it was roughly a million to a million and a half, depending on what route we went. That would bring the building up to code. It would make it handicapped accessible, you know, meet the ADA requirements and would allow us to let the public into the building. The the public would be able to use the building. I got it. And do you have a sense at that point, while you were trying to, you know, fundraise for other things of what the, of what your run rate would be to operate the building just in that way, to have it open to the public to be doing these other, these kinds of activities. Just, just to, so that people have a sense, once again, of, of without, a, without it being a performance space, but with that money in there, about what, what they're figuring that you would need in order to run that. Yeah, and I think that's where we come in, right? Because these community centers only work if the, the building is capitalized. Uh, because these, you know, none of these businesses can afford a mortgage on the facility. So we capitalize the building and our running, our operating costs for the facility could be on the order of a hundred thousand dollars a year. Just to give folks a sense, just to give folks a sense. Well, listen, thank you very much. I think that this has been, I hope this has been helpful. It's certainly been helpful for me. I hope it's been helpful to a lot of the Frank and Mary's out there who are kind of, you know, looking at this, hoping very much that 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 this that the armory is preserved and that there's a real positive result to that building. It's it's certainly an anchor, positive or negative, to what has turned into a wonderful downtown. Um, good luck at good luck at town meeting. I know that we've got somebody coming on in the next show to talk about kind of give the, to talk the other side so that people can kind of see what the alternatives are. Um, and uh, best of luck. Best well, of luck. You. Thank you. Thank you, for, thank you very much. And folks, thank you very much for watching. Um, and we really appreciate um, your interest in the show. And we we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.